Hello. Hello, citizens of Gullen. Citizens of Gullen. Hello. You have all now heard the great news. We are asking all people of Gullen to prepare themselves for this great event. It is our duty to ensure a royal welcome to Madame Zakanasia, who will arrive in a few hours. Citizens of Gullen, I therefore ask all citizens to assemble. It is up to you to prove that our Gullen never forgets its own. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Wait, 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 no, we have <laughs> careful with those things. Now I want everything organized and arranged. Come inside, Your Honor. Young and old. Come along. Join with good, us very good. good. <laughs> All right, hurry up, hurry up. Yes, that's going to look fine. Anya, here, take this. Good, now it works. Oh, hope this is finished in time. Yes, certainly. Cover that up with something. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, have that fixed. I want every detail worked out. I understand. No slip-ups. Is she really that rich? Rich? <laughs> <laughs> Madame Zakanassian, known throughout the world as Madame Petroleum, a title she inherited from her late husband, Mr. Zakanassian, better known as Mr. Petroleum. He owned five percent of the whole world. He died, now she owns it. And just think, she was born here the way I was. Why is she coming back? Oh, I wish we only knew. Good. You are doing a fine job, Anya. Thank you. Members of the Sporting Club of Gullen, fellow athletes, we may have been hit by misfortune, but we have not been defeated. We have not lost our pride in ourselves. Each man must wear a clean pressed shirt. Now is the time for every one of us to look his best. And let's try to keep in step. How are you? Hello. It's going to be a great reception. Oh. I don't want to put any patches on, and it's difficult with something that's almost worn through. We mustn't underestimate the importance of appearance, especially his. Ah, Serge. Mr. Or am I saying something I should Am I supposed to be jealous at my age? Well, I did know her better than anybody else. But if you ask me, I'd say our best approach is not to try to fool her. You know, you know, Carla's, she's too sharp. No, I'd say honestly and openly, uh, our minds are shut down, our factories are closed, uh, our entire population is on relief. Let's face it, we are bankrupt. <laughs> and I'd say, now you've become one of the richest women in the world. Help us. You are only hope. Well, you'd certainly convince me. And me, too. Uh, Mrs. Miller, uh, we were wondering if you, uh, at the beginning, if you could uh, <laughs> just sort of stay in the background. Oh, I do understand. You are very understanding, Mrs. Miller. I try. Serge, come on, we need you. Here, Here take this. What? Oh, uh, uh, oh, Mrs. Miller. Mrs. Miller, could you wait on me now, please? Yes. Yes, right away. In a big hurry. Oh, thank you, Domi. What was she really like, Miller? Carla? Mm. Well, Carla was my youth. You know, now as I think of her, she seems to me the most beautiful girl that ever was. <laughs> you know, she was graceful as well with, with flaming red hair that fell below her hips. Then why didn't you marry her? <laughs> what happened? Well, uh, life <laughs> tore us apart. I wasn't here 20 years ago. What did he mean? Exactly that. Life tore them apart. What are you doing? What is that? Welcome, Carla. It's a welcome for little Carla Vexler, redhead, used to swim nude in the river. Does that give you the right to call her by her first name? No harm done. Anyway, I painted Welcome Zakanassian on the other side. Yeah. She shows herself very friendly. We can always turn the sign around. <laughs> oh, Mayor, I I've been thinking about your speech. Yes? You want to make a point about Carla's generosity. Good idea. She was generous to her. All right. Oh. I'll emphasize that. Any other suggestions? Well, say something about her sense of justice. It was deep. It was... Very deep. Oh, Miller, you're so respected, there's no question you'll be our next mayor. Oh, yes, you will, yeah, sir. Absolutely. No doubt, Miller. Yeah, well, that would be the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, what's that? Oh, it's all right. That's not a it's train. The Diplomat Express. It doesn't stop here anymore. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, dear lady, when I say that you caught us unaware, forgive our appearance. We had planned a more fitting reception. Little Carla. Little Carla. As mayor of Gullen, I'd like I to say a few words of welcome. I demand to... Who's in charge here? Who pulled that cord? I'm in charge. Now look here. Who? I repeat, who pulled that cord? Why? I pulled that cord. You. Me. You have stopped the Diplomat Express. You have disrupted international schedules. Now, tell me why. You could hardly expect me to jump off a moving train. And since I wanted to stop here at Gullet. Madam, once a week, every week in the year, one whole train comes to a complete and full stop at Gullen. As a matter of fact, this very day, in a few hours... I couldn't wait. Here. This is for you. But, madam, it's a thousand. And this is for the Railway Widows Fund. Good heavens, 5,000. Madam, no such fund exists. It does now. <laughs> the lady, sir, is Madame Zakanassian. Madame Zakanassian? I had no idea. Please don't disrupt your international schedule any longer. Madam, so good to have you back, little Carla. Like one of the family. But I must have been such a trouble to you. Oh, don't you remember how you had to beat me every day? No trouble at all. None, really. A delight. Serge! Carla. Well, sir. You've changed, but not too much. <laughs> A dash of grey, but he's still handsome. Oh. <laughs> Don't tell me I haven't changed. Yes, you have. You've become more beautiful. <laughs> it was good of you to come back to us. I've been planning it for years. In fact, ever since I left. It's almost uh, 20 years. Have you thought about me, Serge? Always, Carla. We had our good moments together, didn't we? Unforgettable. Do you remember what you used to call me? Call me that. My little witch. <laughs> Go on. 
My little wildcat. And I used to call you my panther. My wild panther. Oh, look. Oh, no. It's still standing. Your late father built well, gracious lady. Remember, Serge, how I used to sit on the roof, spitting? <laughs> Own young men, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course I remember. And then that day when you didn't meet me, I threw tiles. <laughs> and the police... Oh, where is the police? Nope. <laughs> Captain, Captain, quick. <laughs> You've lasted well, Dobrik. We keep physically fit, madam. And have you learned how to wink an eye at things by now? Would I today be captain of the gun constabulary if I... <laughs> I'll remember that. I've thought of you often, Pastor. In the town jail, when my mother lay dying, how you consoled her. Only part of my humble task, madam. I can still see that white head of yours murmuring to the condemned man in the next cell. You will be pleased to know the death penalty has been abolished. Yes, and I personally am proud to think it was my newspaper, the Gullen Tribune, which led the campaign against this medieval punishment. I suppose it could always be restored if necessary. I mean, isn't there some sort of provision in the Constitution? Yes, yes, there is. In case of an emergency, we can always uh, change the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're wasting a lovely day. Dobrik, the car, uh, hurry up. We've arranged a little tour of the old palace. Oh, no, 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 no. First, I want to go with Serge to the places we knew so well. Remember? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, oh, what a pretty girl. What are you doing in Gullen? I... I work at the Golden Apostle. I used to work at the Golden Apostle myself. Then, one day, I lost my job. gentlemen summer before it's possible we've been to many places ah <laughs> i know i've seen them somewhere before waiter four glasses i'm a conservative man gentlemen but i say our troubles are over. First thing we do is restore the church and get a new bell. Look at those bags. Look at that staff. She's come for a nice long stay. Yes, but I still want to know why. She was born here. She spent her youth here. Two good reasons not to come back. <laughs> Doctors, they cut up corpses and they think they know about people. The human heart, my dear doctor, that's where you must look. I have. And I hate to tell you, what I found. Our heart, Serge. It's grown. The tree has gotten older. No, it's still young. Young and strong. And the hut hasn't changed either. But it was already old. The first time we came here. First time.
No, but that's not possible. Oh, they're always around here. But it's almost exactly like... like the first time. Or don't you remember? Yes. Yes, I remember. I didn't have much of a chance, did I, Serge? <laughs> I mean the day. <laughs> like today. Oh, so warm and lovely. So soft. Ah, oh, with a gentle wind. <laughs> We'd been swimming, and then your kisses like butterflies played around my cheeks, my lips. <laughs> then, of course, when those gypsies decided to play, Girls are so funny. Do you know what I thought when I was in your arms? In a man's arms for the first time in my life? I thought I'd better pretend not to enjoy this so much. Or he'll never believe that he's the first. It was important for me that you knew you were the first. We were both, uh, both so young. I don't know whether you believe me or not. It was hard for me to pretend. I was too much in love with you. I think I screamed. I remember how surprised I was that those damn gypsies were still playing. <laughs> and then you married Matilda Kovac. Her father owned the general store. Lucky for you I did, Connor. You would have been stuck in Gullen, living a miserable life with me. <laughs> Instead, I went to Trieste, where I met Mr. Zaganassian. In a whorehouse. Oh, oh, it was my hair he loved. Oh, Mr. Zaganassian was very strange about women's hair. <laughs> so Matilda hasn't made you happy? Happy? I've hardly been out of Gullen. Five days at the lake. Our honeymoon. It rained four days. Well... The world's the same everywhere. At least you have seen it. Seen it. I own it. <laughs> it was better you went away, Carla. <laughs> what am I? Small shopkeeper in a dying town? Look at it. The mine closed down like... like everything else. Maybe things will get better now. You mean, uh, you mean you'll help us? Carla, 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 if only you knew how it is with us here. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, a few hundred thousand. Uh, a few hundred thousand, that's nothing. I knew you wouldn't forget us. I'd like to wipe out the years. Go back. Is that what you would really want? Yes. Yes, I would. Maybe we can. In our own way? Who knows?
She once worked here as a maid. Did you know? Did you know her when she was a girl? Mm. They say she used to swim naked in the river. Did you ever see her? Yes. She must have been beautiful. She was. Were you ever with her like this? With me? No. No, never. How did she get away from Gullen? Did somebody help her? Where did she get the money? Anya, I must leave soon. I can't stay too long. You always have to leave. When will you take me away? Don't say soon, soon. I want to know when. When? Soon. 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 Okay. Anya, soon. 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 Annie, I'll take you away. I swear it. Man. Man. <gasps> it's her. Madame Zaganessian. The young look for tonight, George. Comme toujours, madame. Anya? That's your name, isn't it? I see you've done your hair differently. Yes, madame. Ah. What does your father do, Anya? He used to work in the mine, but he died. My mother, too. Then you're alone? No. I have a brother, but he left Gullen. The minute someone's over 18, he leaves. You're over 18. You didn't leave. <gasps> Try this one, George. Oui, madame. Who is he? He? We are so wonderful together. You'd never think it to look at him, but when we're alone... Just to let you know I have arrived, if you should need me. Tonight. Everything is ready. I am ready. It only lasts a moment, Anya. I don't know who he is, but don't waste it on him. You can go now. Thank you, madam. Mayor, I have in mind a public works program. You know, aid to small business, encouragement of uh, tourism. Uh... <laughs> Did she actually say she would give us the money? And if so, what are the exact figures? Now, Doctor, now maybe I haven't been to university like uh, some people. <laughs> and true, I began as a humble factory worker. But I can uh, confidently say the size of the loan will be adjusted to our needs. No, she actually used the word loan. Well, of course it's a loan. What are we asking for, Charity? Matilda Miller. Now? I always think of you as Kovac. Well, life hasn't been so bad for you. But I see what you mean. My wife. My wife. My wife. My wife.
If you intend to make a speech, Mr. Mayor, now is as good a time as any. Dear lady, fellow governors, a long time has passed since you left our little town. Almost two decades, a long time. It has gone sadly with the world. It has gone sadly with us. And yet the roots of Gullen are so deep that never have we forgotten our Carla, our gracious lady. Will it surprise you if we remember so much about you? Your father, the well-known architect and builder. Your mother? Who, with any imagination, did not know you were destined for higher things. Even today, your schoolroom achievements are held up as an example by our wise professor here. <laughs> And uh, your generosity. Do we not know, dear lady, that you, although a mere child, brought a sack of potatoes to a starving widow? <laughs> and so, let us say, gracious Carla, welcome, dear Carla Zakanassian. God bless, dear Carla. Zakanasia. <laughs> Your Honor, distinguished guests, fellow Gullenites. <laughs> yeah. How beautifully our mayor spoke about me. And yet, there was not one word of truth in all he said. <laughs> Everybody knows that my father was not an architect. He was a bricklayer. And always so drunk that he refused to work from any building too high to fall from. <laughs> <laughs> and I was not really the kind of child our mayor described. There was hardly a day that our poor, overworked professor didn't have to beat me. I remember always being surprised that a man who looked so weak would have so strong a right dog. <laughs> <laughs> As for my generosity, it is true that I once brought a bag of potatoes to old widow Bolas. I'd stolen them. But it was so that she would let Serge and me use her bedroom. The barn was romantic, but the bed was much more comfortable. More comfortable it was. Much, much more comfortable. <laughs> but let us go from gracious lies to brutal truths. Gullen is in trouble. Gullen needs money. I have money. And I'm ready to help Gullen. I am ready to give two million to Gullen. Did you say two million? Dear lady? One million for the township and one million to be divided equally among the citizens of Gullen. Oh, God. On one woman. condition. An incredible woman. There's one condition. There's one condition. What? There's one condition. One condition. Quiet, quiet, everybody. There's Shh. one condition. <laughs> Tell us your one condition, Carla. I want justice. Does anyone here recognize this gentleman? Why, it's Bardrick. Justice Bardrick. Chief Magistrate Bardrick. When Madame Zakanassian was a girl, I was presiding judge of the criminal court of Gullen. I'm, of course, now in the private employ of Madame Zakanassian, legal counselor. <laughs> 
Get to the point, Bardrick. Madame Zakanassian will pay two million when you, the people of Gallon, have undone the injustice she suffered here as a girl. Serge Miller, please. Me? Hey? Would you mind standing up? If you wish. Some 20 years ago. 20 years, three months and two days ago. A paternity case was being heard here in Golan. I was the judge. Carla Zakanassian, at that time Carla Wexler, claimed that you, Serge Miller, were the father of the child she was then carrying. At that time, Mr. Miller, you denied that you were the father of the child. You alleged, in fact, that the aforesaid Carla Wexler was of such low moral character... That was that... a long time ago. We were practically children. Who remembers what happened or did not happen? Who remembers the truth? They remember the truth, Mr. Miller. State your names, please. Joseph Kardick. Ludwig Darvis. I knew I'd seen them before. Do you recognize that man? Yes, I do. He's Serge Miller. Do you remember the trial? Yes. Case of a girl who claimed Serge Miller had gotten her in a family way. Pregnant, that is. You remember it clearly, then? We were witnesses. Please tell us what you testified on that occasion. We said we had slept with Carla. Both of us, many times. And had you slept with Carla Wexler many times? No. Had you slept with her at all? Never. Hardly knew her. And what was the purpose of this false testimony? To show that Carla had been promiscuous. So you couldn't really tell who the father was? and also to prove she was no good. She would let anybody sleep with her. And why did you do this? Why did you swear a false oath? Why did you destroy the character of a young girl? Miller uh, promised us each a bottle of brandy, if we did. Nothing more? No. Does the defendant have anything to add? What good could it do to bring this up now? Sir. Plaintiff, uh, there was a child born, Madame Zakanassian. Yes, it was taken away from me. It lived less than a year. And what happened to you? I went to Trieste where I became a whore. And why did you enter a life of prostitution? I didn't have much choice. The record of the trial was stamped on my papers. Besides, after that, I didn't care what happened to me. And now you desire justice, Madame Zakanassian. I do. What is the nature of the justice you desire? I want Serge Miller put to death. Killed? You want Serge Miller killed? Yes. I want his life. Serge! Serge! No! 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 Right. My life! It's just a sort of humor. That all happened a long time ago. It's dead and buried. It's forgotten. No, sir, you're wrong. Only our child is dead and buried. Nothing is forgotten. Madame Zakanassian, you forget we are not in a jungle. We are in Europe. In the name of every one of us in Gullen, in the name of every citizen of this independent township, I reject this outrageous offer. <laughs> Would you like to think it over, Mr. Mayor? Never in a million years. Never. No. Never. <laughs> Two million. Two million. One for the township. And one to be equally divided among the citizens of Gullen. We may be poor, we may be bankrupt, but, madam, we prefer misery to blood! Yeah. Never, madam! Never! I can wait.
something must happen to people when they get too much money. It makes you think you can get away with anything, even with... Who does she think she is? And what does she take us for? Oh, Serge. Uh, Serge. Serge. Oh. Matilda. Whatever I did, I... I did only so that I could marry you. I know, I know. I know. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, uh, imagine. To think she can get decent people to agree to... Let's say it. Murder. Mm. You've already washed your face, dear. I just thought I'd wash it again. Oh. <laughs> just once in my life, I'd like to sit in such a car. Even to go around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's like asking for a million. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? It's only a joke. A bad joke. <laughs> Come on. I still would like to take a ride just once in such a car. Good morning, Mr. Miller. Dobrik, any idea why this meeting is being called? Not at all. You? Oh, not the slightest. It's a long time since we've been hunting together. Too long. Hi. Hi. Allie? Hear ye! Hear ye! Town council meeting! Oh, Mayor, before we call to order, I'd like to know, are we, uh, are we meeting because of uh, last night? Of course. Then I, I'd like to say something. You're out of order, Mayor. No, I'm perfectly in order. How can you be when the meeting has not yet been officially called to order? Well, it's I, begun officially. I happen to think this meeting must not be called. The very fact that we are meeting can only mean we're considering that woman's offer seriously. That there, there should be no meeting. But, Serge, there is a meeting. And it's exactly that we're mm. about to discuss. But there must be no discussion. The minute you discuss it, 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 it means that there's something in it. Miller. Open discussion is the heart and soul of democracy. I think we should ignore this whole disgraceful affair in dignified silence. <laughs> if you'll forgive an old war horse politician, that uh, dignified silence business never works with the people. He knows what he's talking about, Serge. I think we've had enough discussion on this point. I move we put this to a vote. Fellow councillors, there must be no vote. The right to vote is basic, Miller. But this is not fair to me. The minute you vote, even against, you, you're voting! Then I take it you vote against me. I'm not voting, I'm just opposing. <laughs> You're not being very logical, Miller. How can you oppose without voting? All in favor? Mr. Mayor, this is a little high-handed. High-handed? You were the one who tried to refuse us a vote. Oppose? I vote for. The church remains neutral. Motion carries. Four to three. Well, I propose that we, the city council, go on record as supporting our old and esteemed friend, Serge Miller. Thank you. I just assume you do not go on record. Whether you like it or not, Miller, you have our unqualified support. Let me send you. Uh, 
I'm almost glad this happened. Yes, yes. The way people have been flocking to my support. Of course. There's a man good to know he's got friends. Thank you. Thank you, Valley. Well, what can I do for you, huh? Oh, not too much. That pipe tobacco. The import brand. Import? Uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> Hello, dear. Here you are. Made from the finest selected leaves of Virginia and Turkish. Ah, the kind of amphibian tobacco. Anything else? A little brandy, please. Coming up. French. Three star. Three star. Uh huh? Long gold cigarette holder of hers. She must think she owns the world. She should know better. Better have her fun. What harm can she do? I've sort of you wild oats in my time. I admit it. <laughs> yes. It was a dirty trick you played on her. But then, everybody's played a dirty trick or two in his lifetime, huh? <laughs> Charge it. Oh, of course. would like to see you, madam. Send him in. Yes, madam. What do you want? Carla, forgive me. I... Yes? It's hard for me not to call you Carla, after all. You feel close to someone you've beaten day in and day out for years. I came as teacher of this town, as your old teacher. This is a joke, isn't it? I hope I haven't been wasting my time. I hope the others realize how serious I am. Look, Carla, many of us could have left Garland long ago. I was offered a professorship at Agrid, the doctor to head a hospital in the capital. We stayed. We don't want Garland to die. You will never succeed, not here in Garland. Why not in Garland? Why should Gullen be any different or any better than any other place in the whole world? I don't know about other places, Carla, but it was here in Garland that Brahms composed a quartet. We're listening to it now. Or don't you recognize it? Oh, yes. Yes, I do now. <laughs> it's been so long since we've had decent music. It was here that Byron wrote a famous ode to liberty in this very room. Shall I recite it to you? I know it by heart. It took you only six beatings to teach it to me. <laughs> oh, liberty. No, Madame Zakhanasian, no. You will never succeed, not clearing God. As a man who has spent a lifetime planting a fleeting image of humanity in these hearts, I say to you, you will never succeed, not clearing God. It was in this same music-loving community that they ran a pregnant 17-year-old girl out of town and branded her as a whore. Do you really think you could buy Serge Miller's life? Yes, I do. You can buy anything. No, that will never happen. You wouldn't care to stake your life on that, would you, Professor? Yes. Yes, I would. Good evening, madam. Will you really do it? Yes, Anya. I will. 
And you never really loved him. Yes. I loved him very much. I still do. Love. Just because you love someone doesn't mean that he's good. But if you really love, you don't ask questions. After what happened to me, you do. Naturally, your friend is married. Yes. How long have you been with him? Three years. Leave him. Leave before it becomes so deeply burned inside of you that there can be no others. I don't want there to be others. You're a fool. Kick him out of your bed. Lock your door. Break with him. You'll be the one, otherwise he'll break with you. Anya. 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 What's wrong? What happened? What have I done? Tell me. You'll never leave your wife. You'll never take me away. It's all lies. You're all alike. All alike? Ah, it's Miller. It's that no good Miller. Listen to me, Anya. I swear by all that's holy, Miller will pay. We'll teach him to do things like that to a woman, even though we're old friends. When we get through with him, we... Who cares about Miller? When will you leave your wife? When will you marry me? Hey, let, let, let me have a bottle of red wine. Yes, huh? the best. Just a minute. A box of tea cakes, please. The big one. Here. Oh, you should get yourself some help, Mrs. Miller. You can't handle this alone. <laughs> Isn't your husband working these days? Sorry, sorry. I overslept. Excuse me. Extra super fine peas, please. We're out of super fine peas. Huh? In fact, we're out of everything super fine. Then order some. Is that a new blouse you're wearing? Yes, it is. On credit. Excuse me. That's a nice new dress. Are those new shoes? Shoes wear out, Miller. On credit, huh? On credit. People are giving credit now. Miller, haven't you got yellow shoes? Chesco and me want yellow shoes. Yellow shoes? Oh, you want uh, yellow shoes? How are you going to pay for them? How? Huh? How? Oof, on credit, of course. Like everybody. But someday you'll have to pay for them. Where will you get the money? I dare you to tell me. I dare you to tell me. Where will you get the no, money? Sir. Where will you get the money? Just... Huh? Where will you? You know how they'll pay, and they know too, with my blood.
Ladies and gentlemen of Gallen, citizens of Gallen, may I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen of Gallen, the articles you see before you may be bought by any citizen of Gallen. I repeat, any citizen of Gallen on our credit plan. All that is required is your signature. No money down, no first payment required. Only your signature. You may buy as much as you like now. Pay when you can. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no reason to wait any longer for all the good things you need. Do not hesitate. All that is necessary is that you step up and choose what you want. You may buy as much as you like now. Pay when you can. Step right up. Come on, come on. Just step in, miss. Ladies and gentlemen, just your signature. All articles are for sale on credit. Valley. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Miller? What can I do for you? The Gullen Tribune is now calling for capital punishment. Our office never interferes with the freedom of the press. But you are the press. You own it. We of the Tribune do not attempt to mold what? or influence public opinion. It is our aim to reflect public opinion. A little bit higher. Uh, there has been a change of public opinion, as you may have noticed. But these articles are an incitement to mass murder. They are, they, they are directed against You're me. You're being very subjective, Miller. The restoration of the death penalty would not be aimed at any one individual. 
Show me once in the whole paper where your name is mentioned. Don't treat me like a fool. There's two million on my head. Oh, oh, what's that? A, a coincidence? What's that? A new suit. <laughs> That's a new desk. And a new chair. Mm -hmm. It's the latest executive type chair. Very relaxing. Helps a man do his best. His best. The Gullen Tribune is now a printed newspaper. Where did the money come from? Those people selling things in the square. Who gave them licenses? The town council. At a special meeting. Special meeting? What special meeting? Uh, by the way, Miller, we've accepted your resignation from the council. I didn't resign. And, of course, there's no question of the party putting you up for mayor. The office requires certain guarantees of moral character which you can no longer give. That is, unless the commission investigating your past clears you. Where shall we put the new title? Ah, put it over there. Captain Dobrik, I'm being threatened. I demand protection. I demand protection of the law. Dobrik, I'm talking to you. Threat? Did you say you were being threatened? Who dares? Come with me. Now, what's your problem, Miller? <laughs> Dobrik, I want to swear out a warrant for the arrest of Carlos Akhenasen. Arrest? <laughs> Let me put you straight about something, Serge. A common mistake civilians make. You don't have the right to demand an arrest. All you can do is report to the police what you want charged against a person. The police decide if an arrest is justified. That's the law in Garland and most other civilized communities. But she's inciting people to kill me. Let's talk sense, Serge. What is this so-called incitement? So-called? She's offering two million for my life. Oh, you think anybody takes that seriously? <laughs> Show me one person who doesn't. Be reasonable, my friend. This happens to be a field I'm an expert in. Right. Now... Let's say somebody seriously wanted to get rid of somebody like you. I don't want to offend you, but do you know what the going price would be for a job on somebody like you? A thousand tops. <laughs> Two thousand if you want to be generous. Done by professional killers. Quiet people, they do guaranteed work. Why should she want to offer two million for something... She can have done for 2,000. Don't ask me to explain that woman's psychology. Dobrik, we're old friends. Look around you. Look how people are buying from those buses on credit. How will they pay, huh? How? <laughs> I'm surprised at you, the leading merchant of Gullen, opposed to people buying? <laughs> oh, Serge, if the faintest suspicion of a serious threat to you arises, just the faintest from whatever source, the entire police and constabulary of Gullen are ready to protect you. You have my guarantee, Serge. In the name of the law. Are those new boots? Yes. Sure. Sure. Take my advice, Serge. Take a sedative. You're haggard. You haven't slept. Right now, you're your own worst enemy. Come on, everybody. Come on. Quick. Hurry. Tanton! Tanton, Madame Zakanassian's panther is loose in the town. All shops and public places to be closed. All streets clear. All reliable citizens to be armed at once. Chesco! Where are you going? I'm going home. Some of our reliable citizens are very poor shots, especially in the dark. Madam.
it's all right. They're shooting at a panther. No, they're shooting at you. Uh. Oh, oh, we'll all be killed. It's dangerous for you, my being here. Shall I go? Yes, yes. Perhaps it's better because of the child. Serge! Serge! I'm sorry. It's all right. I know a place where I'll be safe. Madam, we'll finish him off quickly. You can count on us. Try to get him between the eyes. That's the quickest way. Between the eyes. I can't stand to think of my poor pants are suffering. Trust us, madam. We'll do it properly. Carla, go back in the balcony. Tell them you have no intention of giving them the money. Tell them it's all a joke. But it's not a joke, Serge. Carla... I don't want to, but if you force me to, I, I swear I'll kill you. What good would that do you? If I killed you, they wouldn't get any money, would they? No. If you kill me, they get nothing. Do you remember how it all began, Serge? I do. I was on a balcony like that one. It was a soft and warm night, like tonight. You stood down there and stared at me without moving. I wanted to go back into the room where it was safe. But then there you stood and stared at me openly, almost angrily, as if you wanted to hurt me. Your eyes were lonely and full of passion. Then I don't know why, but I left the balcony and I came down and stood beside you. You didn't say a word. Then we walked off together as if we talked it all out beforehand. As if we both knew where we would go and what we would do. Oh, God, I'm desperate. I've got to think about my son. You had another child, Serge. We had a child. A girl, Judith. Judith. I never thought of the child having a name. All babies have names. I only saw her once, then she was taken away from me. I never had a chance to see the color of her eyes. Her hair was black. Where did she die, Garner? In some home where they took her. I don't remember where. Men in giants, they said. Carla, Carla, if you hadn't forced me. How, how did I force you, sir? By taking me to court, demanding that I marry you. I, I, I couldn't. Why couldn't you? You told me you loved me. I wanted to be somebody. Not like my father, a factory worker. I wanted to be my own boss. Have my own store. So you bribed two witnesses. I would have sent you money. If only I had been reasonable. Carla, life is like that. Yes. Life is like that. You pay for your mistakes. What Panther? What cat? What Panther? Matilda Kova. I would never have suspected. Well, Serge, will you kill me now? I'm not a killer, Carla.
Serge. I'd like to help you, Serge. But? Well, uh, good luck, Serge. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Where are you off to? To the station. To the station? <laughs> Just like that? Just like that. Can I help you with your bag? No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a trip, Serge? How far? Not far. A short trip. I'm not sure yet. We're seeing Miller off. Where is he going? To Australia, maybe. With such a small box? With nothing. No reason to disturb the peace, Serge. Your friends have just come to see you off. I didn't ask them. Listen, I want you to know, I wrote to the chief constable of the guard. We know, Miller. I held the letter up. We were hurt by that letter, Miller. The things you said about us, your old friends. Good news, Your Honor. The railroad has just announced that beginning the first of next month, three stops will be made in Gillen <laughs> Good. Things are definitely looking up. <laughs> Leaving, Mr. Miller. The train will be on perfect time. Oh. <laughs> Would you like to say a few words of farewell, Miller? My train only stops for a few seconds. There's plenty of time, Serge. <laughs> Don't <crowd> me. <laughs> Let me through! Fish, Jesco, see to it that Miller has room! Make way for Miller! That's my train. Please, please let me pass! <laughs> please! What's going on here? They won't let me pass. Who won't let them pass?
Oh, I'm looking for that thing. What do you call it? That thing you measure with. Do you like my new dress? Oh, here it is. The new showcase is coming soon. I'll have to decide where I can fit it in. You can see through the glass. It's electric. A new type of lighting. Indirect, cheaper. Be it resolved that from this date henceforth, in the independent township of Gullen, the crime of murder, rape, treason, and inciting a miscarriage of justice shall be punishable by death. The city council shall constitute itself a special court, and there shall be no appeal from the decision of this court. Opposed? Well, doctor, the motion is carried. It is now a law, but there is not one of us here who wants it used. If you think you know another way, Forgive us. We would not have intruded except on a matter of the utmost importance. You killed him? Madam, please. We still have our principles. Serge Miller's alive. We've come to you because this is our last chance to stop this terrible thing from happening. You don't want the money? Yes, we want the money. But not for Serge Miller's life. My secretary handles all requests for charity. No, madame. Not charity. We've come to talk about investments, straight investments. Not one of us has ever been able to understand why Cullen died. There are untold possibilities here. Look, this is a geologist's report. There's oil here. And a mine. And a foundry, factories, manpower. And no one can understand why this property has been neglected until it's practically ruined. It could be bought for a few hundred thousand. Madame Zakanasian, buy the land, buy the factories, buy the mine. You want me to buy the mine? The factory, the land, me? It's a fabulous investment. <laughs> Why, gentlemen, I can't buy the foundry, the mine, the factory, or the land. Well, gentlemen, Madame Zakanasian cannot buy those properties. She cannot because, uh, because she already owns them. <laughs> yes, uh, the factory, the mine, um, the foundry and all its dependencies, <laughs> the riverfront, including the hut. The, in fact, practically the entire township, street by street and house by house including the adjacent farmlands. It was you, then, who shut down the factory and mine? No, of course, it was I. You destroyed a town. You destroyed us. It was a winter day when you ran me out of town. No one seemed to notice that I was so sick with pregnancy that I could hardly walk. And when I fell, it was Captain Dobrik who got me to my feet. Let us forgive those who trespass against us as we... Later. After I've had justice. Can one injustice cure another? Why force us into a crime? Madame Zakanasian, I have the honor to inform you that the city council reintroduced capital punishment at Gullen this very day. My dear professor, why do you talk about a crime? 
Now you can do it legally. Good day, gentlemen. He could not have been Captain Dobrik. What are you doing here? I won't believe it. I won't. Don't break. Does he mean so much to you? Yes. Yes, he does. Then leave. Get out of Gala while you can. Get out. Yes, I will. I go to Trieste the way you did. Trieste? Yes. Yes. Well, then, don't go to Trieste looking like that. Wash your face and dry those tears. Tears are for fools. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, this way, come on. There. This way. Oh, be careful. There. Uh. That's very nice. <laughs> they say it encourages trade. No, I'm sure it does. I always dreamt of having a shop like this. Where could we talk? In the back room. It's quiet there. Uh, well, uh, leave it here. It's all right. There. Serge, it's my duty to inform you that you will be tried before the town council in the open court which is now being erected. There was talk about our being underhanded. Secret. So we're holding the trial in the traditional way of our ancestors, outdoors, in the open. Will you also make public the fact that Carla offered two million for my life? Listen, Miller, if you intend to play that game, you'd best tell Just us now. Just a minute, Colonel. We've promoted Dobrik to a full colonel. <laughs> I don't think Miller sees the present picture clearly. The Colonel and a lot of others here are very strongly opposed to any trial, as you must have realized from that panther hut. In fact, it was all we could do to restrain him and others from taking action. Immediate action, which would eliminate the need for a trial. I'm being honest with you, Miller. Thank you, Mayor. If you do come to trial, would you accept the judgment of the court without question? Yes, I would. <laughs> then I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Miller. And good Goodbye. Just a minute, Mr. Mayor. We agree to do this together. Uh, man to man, Miller. Wouldn't it be better if we didn't have to call this trial tomorrow? You've just uh, shown such community spirit. I. We are sure we can count on you. It's loaded. All that's needed is to pull the trigger. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Believe me, Serge, it's better for you. For us all? Dobrik, I said no. What is it, Miller? Are you afraid of dying? <laughs> Death. Let me tell you, it's in my line, too. I've seen it a hundred times. I've killed a few myself in the course of duty. There's nothing to it. Really. People exaggerate so. I've often wondered what all the fuss is about. Bang, you're dead. Simple. You stop living. Take my word for it, Miller. It's the easiest thing in the world. Dobrik. I want you all to judge me. I will not protest nor complain. I'll accept your judgment, whatever it is. Because for me, it'll be a kind of atonement. God knows what it'll be for you. Maybe justice. But I will not spare you the task of a trial. I told those stupid idiots that when it got down to it, we couldn't count on you. I knew it'd be too much for you. We were going to throw you in jail. Funny thing, your lady friend, madam, didn't want it. Havana? 
last. Charge it. See you later, Serge. When is it for? Hmm. Oh, uh, tomorrow. Might as well get it over with quickly. Matilda, I want you to know the truth. Maybe it'll help you to forget. I married you for your money. That's as good a reason as another. Anya, let me in. Anya, let me talk to you. I've got to talk to you, Anya. Everything's going to be wonderful now. No, it's all over. Go home to your wife. Please let me in just for a minute. Please, just a minute, let me in. Just for a minute. That's what you've said for three years. When we get the money, we will go away together. Just you and me. And if we don't get the money? I'll find a way. I promise you. Anya. Anya. I was expecting you. I guess I knew you'd be here. It's for tomorrow. Are you afraid? Sure. Of course I am. I know how you feel. Do you? I've had 20 years of it. And you carry only one corpse around in your heart. Your own dead body. And it will only be for a few short hours. I've carried two corpses. The child. Judith. And a 17-year-old girl you killed. She was gay. Full of life, love. Everything was wonderful. She died the day, the moment you brought those two witnesses. Everything in her died. I just told my wife I've always loved you. Have you? And because you couldn't have me, did it stop your body from coming alive? But you have a son, so it couldn't be true. It was true for me. Maybe men are different, or maybe it's just me. But since then, no man has ever reached me. I died when I was 17. We'll be even tomorrow. Even? There'll be nothing left for me to live for tomorrow. An empty life. Tomorrow? Tomorrow?
tumor. Tomorrow. Nothing else, the whole world. You and me. You and me. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. We'll have a wonderful life together. Children. For oh, Serge. Mm. I love your hair. So black, so black. So black. Uh, so black. It's gray. Your hair is gray. Oh, Serge, your hair is gray. Uh, We could have had a life of love. Uh, such love, such uh, love. Uh, no. No. Why did you kill our love? Die. 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 Learned judges of the Municipal Court of Gollum, you have now heard the legal side of this case. Sworn and verified testimony from Joseph Kadek and Ludwig Darvis. The testimony of Madame Zakanassian, the testimony of Colonel Dobrik, and finally, the confession of the accused himself. The law is clear. Learned judges, it is now for you to speak. Are you ready for the verdict? Yes. 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 How do you find him? Guilty. 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 What good would one vote have been? Serge Miller, stand up. You have been found guilty of the charges brought against you. Do you have anything to say before we pronounce sentence? I'm a human being. Serge Miller, it is the sentence of this court that you be taken at once from this place and be put to death. Bardrick, the checks. to the independent township of Gullen. One million. Signed, Carla Zakanassian. Pay to the citizens of Gullen. One million. Signed, Carla Zakanassian. <laughs> Colonel Dobrik, remove the prisoner. They are about to take Serge Miller out and kill him. 
Is there anyone here? Even one person that feels that this is uh, unjust? Not one person? Not anyone? Not even one? One? This is the moment I've been waiting for. This. I planned it for years. But I could not believe that it would happen so beautifully, so cleanly. You were no better than he. You who stood by and let him destroy me without a word. There now, for two million. You, together, openly, have agreed to kill one of your old friends. Look at the face of the creature next to you. Killers! Murderers! Uh, are you afraid I'll take the money away from you? There is no need to worry. I want you to have the money. I want you to be able to afford the luxury of a conscience. Ah. I bought you for 4,000 each and I could have gotten you cheaper. Don't destroy Serge Miller or what's left of him. If you killed him, in a few weeks you might begin to forget. I want Serge Miller alive. Free. Living among you. I want you to see him. Day in and day out. I want you alive, Serge. If they'd cut your head off, you might have died a small hero in a small way. I don't even want that. Live among these people who are ready to shed your blood. Talk to them, play with them. Are your bags among those? Right there, Put them madam. to one side. At once, madam. Anya. We've moved our bags, madam. Good. You're fired, all three of you. I don't need you anymore. You stay here in Gullen, where you belong. Judith would have been about your age if she'd lived. This is for you. Get in the car behind. They'll take you out of Gallen. Go anywhere you want to. But don't go to Trieste. Get in the car. The visit is over. <laughs> 